Hello, my loves. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope your day, your morning, afternoon, evening, your night is going well. I just want to start this off by introducing myself. My name is Gabriella Fox. This is Rededication. And real quick, I just want to talk about kind of what my podcast was before because I've had quite a journey in releasing this first episode. So before this um, podcast was called Ethereality, it was a combination of the word ethereal and reality. It was supposed to be a new age podcast, but now it's called Rededication and it is <laughs> it is an anti new age podcast, so to speak. And so I have been I've had I've been into the new age um, spirituality movement for about two and a half years before I I denounced it. I officially stopped partaking into the divination the sorcery and just the witchcraft essentially i started i stopped partaking all of that february 24th from that point forward everything has changed (laughs) but i want to start from the very beginning because i want people to understand my story more i want people to find truth in it resonate with it and hopefully Um, with my telling the truth and my being vulnerable about my experience with it it will help a lot of people as well so before I went to college this was about this was 2020 2020 in the summer summer 2020 I was heavily contemplating on what my purpose was on earth like what was I supposed to do what am I here for why am I here Um, am I ever going to live the life that I ever that I always wanted to live I was asking all of these questions and once I got to college I started to ponder on that thought even more on that question even more and so first of all let me tell you about my background in Christ I did not grow up in church I had family members who would go to church often um, every week actually Bible study Sunday school all of that I did not get any of that um we did go to church occasionally we went to church maybe on like um holidays and stuff we were really um individual when it came to us um worshiping him and following him so we did not go to church often so because of that i kind of had room to wander around the world and just wander and figure out like what did i believe in what was the difference between right and wrong to me I was able to discover and experience like what am I doing here what is out there you know because of that of course I got into things that were just not of God now I want you to keep in mind that I did have family that were followers of Christ and I'm not saying that I wasn't per se but it was not as strong as everyone else's it was not I was a lukewarm Christian that's a better word there you go I was a lukewarm Christian pretty much (laughs) so Uh, Before I went to college, I received a Bible. I received journals from my grandmothers, both of my grandmothers actually. Took them with me, um, although I did not read them often because I never knew how to read the word. I never knew how to um, talk to God. I never knew how to receive messages from him. So the Bible just kind of sat on the nightstand, honestly. It really just sat on the nightstand. I really never really touched it. So freshman year I met a guy I didn't meet a guy it was actually I met him in high school actually I started talking to him occasionally in high in college as well when I got to college I started talking to him a little bit more and I felt connected to him I felt drawn to him I did not know what it meant I did not know if there was something telling me that there was still like something there I don't know if it was just in my own head I don't know what it was I I tried going to God for it. This is the first time I tried going to God for it. I tried um, listening to sermons. I tried writing down messages that I received from the sermons. I tried applying that to my situation. I tried praying about it, did not receive an answer. All of this, I really got into new age because I just was not being patient. And I didn't, I didn't understand how to really speak to God and how God really worked. And that is just so sad to just realize, like, dang, like, I really got caught up in all of this because I didn't understand God's word. I didn't understand how he communicated with me. Even when I went to church, I still couldn't comprehend and it didn't click. As I start figuring out, like, okay, what do I do? I don't know what to do. This, these feelings are getting stronger and stronger for this guy. And I don't know how to 
I don't want to communicate it with him, but I don't want to just ignore it because I can't. As someone who's very um, emotional, someone who's very sensitive, I can't like bottle in emotions for too long. I applaud everyone who was able to do that because me, <laughs> me, I cannot do that. No, I cannot do that at all. I'm very much so a sensitive being, so I, I cannot do that. So I was scrolling on Twitter, scrolling on Instagram. I specifically went to Twitter. And you know how on Twitter you have like the little, the little icon that says like a community on it. They have the different communities. And then under that specific community, they have tweets that belong in that specific category. I saw one for spiritual and I saw one for um, horoscopes and I saw one for Taurus because, you know, my astrology sign is a Taurus. So I saw all of that and I clicked on it because there were just messages and it had all the signs of the Zodiac. And I was like, huh, what is that? I click on it and I read the message. I didn't fully understand it, but I was intrigued. I was like, what, what is this? Like, why are they speaking messages like they're God, like they're Jesus? Like, what's going on? <laughs> And so I came across more tweets like that. And eventually I came across card pull readings. I came across readings regarding love and regarding um, career and regarding finances and all these things. And, you know, me not being told what was right and wrong, I clicked on it. I remember getting my first card pull by this person who was a tarot reader. I tipped her. I tipped. It was like two ninety nine for like a card pull. I tipped her. And I asked her, like, oh, my gosh, like, what is this guy? Like, who is he? Why is he giving me these feelings? And she gave me the answer. And um, <laughs> she gave me the answer. She was like, okay, there's definitely some potential here. Um, you do have to be patient, though, because it's not going to come very fast. It's not going to come, like, at a fast pace. So just keep asking for your angels for guidance keep asking for your angels for guidance i was just led further and further into the trap y'all led further and further into the trap keep talking to your guides and just ask them for guidance pray to god all these things and no i rebuke that they did not say um pray to god they said go to your spirit guides for guidance now thinking about it none of the readings i've got they've said nothing absolutely nothing about god at all that was my that should have been my first red flag but you know me I I <laughs> I just didn't know I didn't know what was right and wrong and I should have known but you know you live and you learn <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot throughout this podcast so from that point forward I started getting more and more tipped readings I started asking more questions about this um this connection I started asking more questions about what I should do what God wants me to do all these things and while I was still doing that I was while I was doing that I was still reading my I wasn't reading my Bible that's a lie while I was still doing all of that I was still um listening to sermons every single Sunday I was writing down messages I received from sermons because I just wanted to see if I was going to get a message from like God himself and I was not, I was not very educated again on reading the Bible. So I barely touched my Bible. <laughs> Freshman year me was, uh, she was just in trouble. So I remember this one reading I got from this girl. I tipped her, how much did I tip her? I tipped her like $7 for a reading and about the same thing, about the exact same thing. And she told me that, oh, I'm going to, I'm paraphrasing here because I do not have the messages anymore. Um, this connection is going to be very significant in October. You know, there's got, there's a lot of potential for a future here, like a marriage and relationship and all these things, just feeding me lies. And I was like, okay. So the first thing I got from it was timing. Timing was the one thing I was looking for. And when I got a specific time in mind, that is when I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to just wait until October and see what happens. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, sir. Mm -mm. It did not work like that. And so... This was about in September. Wait, fast forward to October. I was at my, I was at a function. I was at a little kickback with my roommates and my um, friend. And I was feeling very sad. I was feeling very upset because I still didn't know what this connection meant. I was being told all of these things about him, saying that, that he liked me and that he had feelings for me and all these things. But it was just not happening. I got another reading. Um, because on my timeline, I was following all these tarot readers and on my timeline, 
there was a girl who was doing who was currently doing like um free spreads uh, for those of you who don't know what that is essentially a free spread spread is when a tarot reader um gives you a certain amount of cards and then give you a reading um so i was like oh my gosh like i'll no it wasn't tarot to be specific it was actually um messages from your person if you if you know you know <laughs> so if you don't know essentially messages from your person are handmade cards you get um plain cards and essentially the tarot readers will write their own messages on there that they feel called to write on there that's what they say that they feel called to write on there but yeah essentially they're cards that are made by readers themselves they're not um tarot or oracle yeah so i pay her and i uh, she gives me my reading and she tells me around the same thing that the other readers have been telling me essentially that oh there's potential here but you know he's very insecure about his finances right now the set and the third and christmas is going to be significant because he wants to spoil you but he's just feeling very unstable and he doesn't feel good about himself right now so you have to wait a little bit but he still needs time to process himself and get himself together and you heard what i just said right boom there's another timing so christmas got it holidays got it that is what my next focus on was okay let's see if something will happen in the holidays let's see if he'll do something telling you all right now nothing happened <laughs> nothing happened and so I remember Christmas it was around Christmas time I was home from school I was very confused I felt very lost I felt very upset very sad very a lot of anguish because I felt that I was just being deceived by God himself but y'all God had nothing to do with this he said mm -mm, don't bring my name into it y'all <laughs> he said don't bring my name into it because I had nothing to do with it um, so I, I started journaling a bit more after receiving all those readings. I got very into shadow work. I got very into healing and, um, learning more about myself because part of the messages that I received was, oh, you have to focus on yourself. You have to learn about what you learn about the wounds that you still have within you. Like, what do you have to work on? What, what are you protecting onto other people? Essentially, I was, I was doing healing. I would look up. I would look up journal prompts and I would just write in my journal every single day about everything I needed to heal. And through that, I started to learn more about the chakras. I learned more about divine feminine energy and divine masculine energy. And I learned more about how to balance your chakras and all of these things. All of these and all of this information was just coming right at me. And I really thought it was true. I was tricked into believing it was true. And from that point forward, I started moving farther and farther away from God Although I always knew that the God that I believed in was of Jesus, was um, the father of Jesus. Um, but I was not following him the way that I should have been following him. This has been a thing for those next two years, two and a half years, I've been doing the same thing. Eventually, I stopped getting as many readings because I heard that you're not supposed to get a lot of readings on it. That you're supposed to take the guidance that they give you and then move on. I... I I got a lot of readings. I don't know what else to say. I remember 2021, January 2021, I made my own deck of cards. I made my own deck. <laughs> I learned about talking to your spirit guides. I learned about talking to your angels who are supposed to help you and talking to God. And I would, I made my own deck. I was in quarantine. I had COVID at the time. I was in um, quarantine and I made my own deck of cards right after quarantine. And that is how I started talking to an entity that I thought was my spirit guide, my guardian angel, but was actually a demon. I did not find this out until um, very recently, actually. Um, so that's how I started talking to her. And, you know, a lot of people would be like, Gabby, what were you thinking? Like, why would you do that? Like, you know, good and well that it was bad. And maybe I did know that it was bad. Maybe I did. But <laughs> some part of it, it felt right. It felt true. It felt, it felt like this is what I was meant to be on because of how much peace I felt after the meditating and after doing shadow work. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually really healthy for me. I should keep doing it. Biggest lie ever, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> I'll talk to the entity and like every single day I would talk to her and I would ask her about this relationship with the guy and you know she would tell me oh just focus on yourself for now um don't worry about it just keep focusing on yourself all of these things and you know that is what I would do 
that's what I would do. I would just focus on myself and keep doing shadow work and stuff. But I was also still, I didn't get any paid readings. However, I was reading a lot of horoscopes. Not the horoscopes that you find on the websites because I just did not. Those were just dumb and I just, <laughs> they are dumb. And I just didn't resonate with them. But I also read the horoscopes that um, the tarot readers, the, the psychics and the witches would always put out. I would always read those because they resonated with me more to me. And Uchile, I would do all of that. I would do all of those things. I would, I would rely on those messages rather than the word of God. I would rely on those messages. And I slowly stopped watching um, church sermons online. And I just started relying fully on that and relying on relying on the information that I was taught within New Age. So uh, it just sounds so dark just saying all of it right now. But yes, child, that was that was that that was what it was. And on my journey, still doing this stuff, I got um, introduced to the concept of twin flames. Now, you guys have probably heard that concept before, but if you don't know what it is, a twin flame is believed to be someone who is your other half, someone who is put on this earth with you to um, spread love, to spread unconditional love around the earth, and to bring other people closer to God. Now, imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. Taking such a love and light concept and, and grouping it with just a lot of things that are not of God. It's just so ironic to me now I'm looking back on it. And I was truly deceived, y'all. As I got introduced to that concept, I started, you know, doing whatever I could to, you know, get with my twin flame. I believe this guy was my twin flame. I believe that we were supposed to be together and all these things. And you guys will get an episode on that when I'm ready. But essentially, I do not believe in that anymore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I got introduced to that concept. And I would spend so much time. I would spend so much time, like talking to my deck of cards and shuffling the cards and talking to that spirit that demon I would spend so much time talking about it and I would spend time trying to figure out what was true and what was not true and I would be deceived over and over and over again about like when it was going to happen like when was union going to happen when um I could expect union and I keep I kept being told divine timing However, you know, I kept reading the horoscopes as well. And the horoscopes would tell me differently. They would give you actual dates and times of when certain things would happen. And I would force it. Even if the messages didn't resonate with my, with my corrupted soul, <laughs> I forced it to resonate with me. I made it work. I made it like, okay, I saw this message. That means it's going to happen for me. That's done. Period. That's it. No. <laughs> no. And so I would tell myself okay he's gonna reach out y'all he's gonna tell me how he feels he's gonna do this he's gonna do that never happened I was deceived and this is ha this has been a pattern that had been going on for two and a half years y'all two and a half years this has been going on and I was searching in the wrong places now eventually I started you know healing and I started learning more about myself through new age I started learning about my triggers I started learning about why I was thinking the way I was thinking, why I had certain beliefs on things, and I eventually learned to detach myself from this world. And that sounds really scary thinking about it. It just gives me chills thinking about it. And that's what I learned to do. And I kept on talking to that entity. And as I was talking to that entity, I started feeling so much warmth. I felt comfort. I felt love from that entity. And when you feel all of that, you are led to believe, oh my gosh, this really is my spirit guide. Even if I question, like, is this a demon? Like, how do I know this is an angel? No. They would trick you into thinking that it was, in fact, an angel. That, that they are angels when really they're not at all. I'm going to do a whole episode on, quote-unquote, spirit guides and demons and all of that in another episode. Because I can get into that. Like, that will be an entire episode. Don't worry. Um, so that has been my life for the next two years. I have been linked to New Age because of a connection that I was told over and over and over and over and over again that it would happen, but it was not happening. Every time I tried to leave, I was led right back to my feelings for this guy. I was led right back to um, speaking to the entity. I was led right back to where I was in the beginning. And while it was getting less and less painful, 
I still didn't feel fulfilled by it. I still felt like there was something missing. And that was God. <laughs> God was missing. That was that was the missing piece. <laughs> that has been my journey for the past two and a half years. That has been the reason I've been linked to it. And I was told so many lies about her, so many lies about the entity that made me believe like, oh, it's an angel. I was, I believe in so many foolish things. Of course, I believed in chakras. Of course, I believed in divine feminine energy and divine masculine energy. Of course, I believed in angel numbers and crystals and manifestation and sound healing bowls and all of these things and meditation. All of it was a lie. And all of them are demonic influences that are trying to get a hold of you. And as you keep listening to this podcast, you will start to be revealed the truth about everything. But right now, you're not going to feel that way. You're going to feel angry as I tell you this. You're going to feel like, oh, this girl don't know what she's talking about. Like, she needs to shut up. She needs to just, like, meditate. Like, she needs to get in alignment with her spirits and with her chakras and all these things. Uh Uh-uh. Um, tried all of that for two years, actually. Tried that for two and a half years. Did not work. Anyways, I believed in so many foolish things. I also believed in reincarnation. I believe that once you die, you come back onto this earth for a second chance. I believe that your angels are people who who have either died in this lifetime or have been in another lifetime with you and they're just guiding you through this one. I thought that once you go to heaven, it was like this, I don't know how to explain it. It was kind of like a simulation. I thought always thought of the life as a simulation where when you die and go to heaven and there was no hell, you would just go straight up to heaven and you would pass like quote unquote a test. That is what I believed. And then you would go back down to earth here if you did not pass that test. I always believed hell was on earth. Who shall I? Oh my gosh. I'm, <laughs> I just sound so stupid talking about it. I just, I don't know. So I believe all of these things. This was me. And I felt so beautiful while following all of these things. I felt like I was different from everyone else. I felt like I just had an alluring energy to me and I just felt I was, um, I felt my energy was sexy. I felt that my presence was sexy. I didn't even have to dress up in anything um, that showed a lot of skin to even convey myself that way. I was naturally this, I was naturally that. I thought all of these things about me that were just, and maybe, maybe they're true. But I was looking for that beauty and that validation in the wrong place. While I was still feeling all of these things, eventually, um, I want you. To, I want to talk about my um, my perspective on God and on the Bible and all of this. While I was still following this, I was I was committing blasphemy. <laughs> I was saying all of these things about the Bible. I was saying that oh, the Bible was written by a white man. You don't even know if it's true or not. I was saying that. I'm just shaking. All I can do is shake my head at all these things because I was just so foolish. You know, we don't know if the Bible is real or not. Like the Bible has been revised so many times. How do we know if it's speaking the truth? Oh, Jesus was a white man. Oh, we were forced into um, believing Christianity because of the slaves. Like we had our own practices in Africa and we were forced to believe in Christianity when we were um, slaves to the white man. All of these common arguments you see whenever someone is trying to denounce Christ, trying to denounce the Bible. Now I know that you can debate people all day. You can try to argue your case over why the Bible is real and why God is real. But at the end of the day, and it's really sad to say this, but that's just something that they have to you know, feel for themselves, something that they have to experience for themselves. Because of course, your belief, um, your following in Jesus Christ and your belief in God, all of that is based on faith. Without faith, you're not going to receive um, God's glory if you don't even believe in him. But it all comes with faith. There's going to be a time where you're going to have a breakthrough and where you will really see the presence of God. And you'll really see Jesus. Like there are so many people who have seen Jesus in their dreams, who have been saved from all the witchcraft and just the nonsense that comes with New Age. There are so many testimonies on this, yet a lot of people still choose to turn a blind eye to it because of information and opinions that other people have put inside their heads. It's really crazy because once you start following him for real, you realize how corrupt this world really is. You realize how the enemy tries to bring people farther and further away from God. 
for the sake of being rebellious, for the sake of being taken out of a box that they have been conditioned to feel they've been constrained in and that that they're being judged by every single person who is a believer in Christ. There are Christians out there who do not spread his message the right way, who do not deliver messages in the right way, who make God turn out to be some evil man who is controlling and judgmental and just mean-spirited and um, a God that is not accepting of um, people. But that is far from the truth. That is so far from the truth. And I wish people would wake up to it. And it really makes me want to do everything I can to do that. And what's crazy is while I was still following all these um, new age practices, I I began to have a desire and that desire was to help people. And this is where God started revealing himself to me and where I was, when he was giving me chances to go to him and to follow him. I had a strong desire to help people. I had a strong desire to help heal people, to help bring people closer to God. And I was trying to do that under um, new age. And, you know, because new age was essentially created by the enemy, it just wasn't going to work. I remember if you guys have been following me for the past two years, you know that I have been creating highlight reels on angel numbers and how to strengthen your intuition. What are twin flames? What else? What is manifestation? How to heal? All of these things I have just been spreading nonsense about. And I thought that I really thought that I was right. I really thought that I was speaking the truth, but I wasn't. I was just being so deceived. It's so deceiving, y'all. And it makes me so upset because when you're in it, when you're following new age, you're going to you're going to think that it's the truth. You're going to think that, oh, everyone else is crazy. I'm just being open minded. I'm just being free spirited. I'm just being non judgmental. I'm just being all these things. But no, you're being deceived. Like, no, that's not the truth at all. Ugh, just makes me so upset. But yeah, I always had a desire to help other people. I didn't know that I wanted to be a, essentially a disciple. I didn't know that I wanted to work with God. I didn't really, I knew that, but I didn't know how to put it into words because again, new age spirituality, it just clouds your mind. It brings you away from God. I really did not know that that is what I wanted to do. I just thought that I was going to rely on my own wisdom and my own teaching somehow. And I thought that I was going to teach people these things that way. Because, you know, if you do, if you look into it, you will see there are so many people who call themselves, um, who call themselves light healers, who call themselves, no, light workers. They call themselves light workers. They call themselves spiritual mediums um, that spreads love and light. They call themselves healers. They call themselves all these things. And I was just so confused because all of these other people, they, they did this with zero trouble, it seemed like. They were able to have their own um, ebooks, They were able to have their own podcasts. They were able to have their own businesses surrounding this. But me, I wanted to start a podcast. I wanted to have my own fashion brand dedicated to all of these things. But I could never get myself to start because I was looking for knowledge in the wrong place. I was looking for the right knowledge but I was looking in the wrong place for that knowledge now I know that it was in fact God trying to protect me all he was trying to protect me and I'll always be thankful for that every time I would speak about him every time that I would speak against him I would feel certain feelings in my chest when I spoke bad about him I would feel a heaviness in my chest whenever I would just speak about oh like I don't think I'm good enough for God I don't think God loves me this that and the third because that's how I felt. That's how I felt because, you know, freshman year, I liked the guy. I wasn't getting answers from God himself and from the sermons I was listening to. I could have read my Bible. I was, like, telling myself all these things, like, God doesn't love me. I don't think I'm good enough for him. Like, I've done all these bad things that I, that I knew were bad. And I've been warned by a lot of people. I've been warned by my grandmother before she passed away. I was warned by there were just um, testimonies of people saying, oh, it's not real. I was not listening to them either. I was just following what felt right to me. And what feels right to you is not always going to be of God. And it's not always going to be true. It's not always going to be the truth. And it just, it brings me so much pain because dang, like I was really deceived by the devil. Like the, the entity has been speaking to, she learned me like the back of her hand. She Um, was able to learn about my fears my weaknesses my strengths all these things and she used that to my advantage and she was able to pull me in deeper and deeper and deeper 
and oh my gosh I was just in such a daze and so many people are in such a daze I was running away from him because I did not feel like I was good enough for him that was the reason why I was so stuck in that you know in those practices and those really dark practices and I know a lot of you guys feel this way too and I just want to tell you guys that Jesus loves you God loves you I'm going to be explaining in future episodes of how to fully denounce New Age, um, the steps to doing so, and really learning how to get away from that stuff when you're ready. But this practice is very deceiving, y'all. I really don't know what else to say because a lot of people will call me crazy. A lot of people will think that I am just being a Jesus freak when I'm trying to warn them. Like, it's just not true. It is not true, my loves. It's not true. And the devil is very... He is very crafty when it comes to these things. But God will, regardless, God will always, he will always win. There's no competition. He will always prevail. Like, that's period. But he will do a lot of things to convince you that God is not the way to go. He knows that a lot of people are trying to seek comfort. A lot of people are rebelling against God because they feel they have past memories. They have memories and they have trauma um, connecting to the church, connecting to their beliefs. And a lot of people have just been through all of these bad experiences. And so they turn to new age. They turn to new age because it promotes, it promotes finding a lie through supernatural means that perceives itself as the truth. I'll do an entire episode on that. I'll do an entire episode on whatever you guys want to hear, honestly, because I feel like I've just experienced a lot through it. I feel like I've said a good bit of information. Um, this is only part, part one, by the way. This is just part one. Perhaps maybe I will be talking more about my journey now and like where I am now in the next episode. I pray that you find the truth because the truth is going to set you free because that's what it did to me um, on Easter. I will get into that more in the next episode. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye. Y'all have an amazing rest of your day, rest of your evening, rest of your night. Um, God bless you and I'll see you in the next episode.